the furthest distance. Who's the furthest y'all are aware of? Uh, L.A., California. Los Angeles. They're driving? They are driving from L.A. to our store. What in the 20, world 20, is that about? 27 hours is what he said. That's nuts. Um, y'all are crazy. Like, <laughs> whiskey's not worth that, okay? It's not worth it. Well, the party might be. The whiskey is not worth it. At the events, you're going to be doing the hourly drops, but you're going to have a lot of local stuff. Some of the stuff we're going to try here tonight, um, that's going to be for sale. At what time can they go in and buy those things? So that's becoming difficult as the demand increases and the uh, number of folks show up. I mean, the the pecan batch is already going into the lottery because, I mean, we have such a demand for it. And yeah, we're going to do, what we said, 40 out. bottles every hour for the pecan. For five hours. For five in the hours. lottery. Let yeah. that go out in the, the lottery. lottery. A cigar batch will be introduced there with Matt Crittenden. He'll be doing samples at the table. So you, as soon as the store opens, you can come in and buy a bottle of that. Yeah. Okay. We're going to release them every hour on the hour with the uh, distiller or the distillery there. And, and likely a one bottle limit until we've distributed them. And if you want another bottle, come back through the line. I mean, we, we do want it to be as fair as possible. We have no idea how many people are showing up. And we're trying to get as many bottles out to everybody. They asked if we're going to do a Waffle House takeover on Sunday. There is con there are conversations being had about that. Um, it's going to be un informal because most Waffle Houses have like seven seats. And so if we do something formal, it's going to be a Waffle House parking lot takeover. Ash Browns in the parking lot. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, so to answer Andrew, most of it will go into the lottery. Uh, the pecan, it's just the most fair way to make sure everybody gets a chance at the pecan. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to release some more later on. But that means like every, like you already have like 150 bottles allocated each drawing. Uh, so there's 160 every rack. And then, but is that including the another pecan? 40 of okay. pecan. So you have 200 on every 200 rack. 200 so like an hour. It means everybody gets a chance at something each yes. hour. Plus okay. the bonus racks. Awesome. 200 chances times five. We do. We do that same thing every hour for five hours straight. So you show up. Yeah. We will release tickets nine o'clock, and you get a free ticket. Everybody stands in line, just get a ticket, one ticket per person, with a valid ID. You got to be twenty-one to get a ticket. Don't bring your kids to try to get tickets. <laughs> it won't work unless they're uh, twenty-one. Unless they're twenty-one, and then um, we call numbers. So the ticket's just a free ticket to get you in line. And then we have a rack full of 20 bottles or 200 bottles every hour for you to choose from. And then the next hour we will pull tickets for the next hour, so on and so forth. There is no benefit to getting there early. We're all getting tickets. It's not like a first come first serve thing. I mean, your ticket doesn't, whether you get the first ticket or the last ticket, they get pulled randomly. So and now, everything's done through a auto generator. There's no chance we pull everyone's ticket. So if, if we'll get first place three times in a row, that's up to Google, not us. We have no control over that. And to answer Michael Hill, the blueberry will come out in June. Hmm. That is when we are going to get the blueberry or the Mississippi Bluesberry Crittenden's. Mm. You haven't tried. I have not tried. You don't have it here. No, I'm going to try and get Matt to bring a bottle of that and an Amaruna. Mm. I don't care anything about the Umbarana. It said it tastes like straight carrot cake. And I'm mm, okay, it. I'll try it. I you, still yeah, don't think I'm going to like it. Matter of fact, kid got excited about carrot cake. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> still not going to like it. Uh, but Ben says, I love yeah, cigar blends. Say what cigars are going to be available at Spillway? Like, so can't... we can't sell cigars. Okay. We can't sell tobacco of any sort. I do have a mobile cigar lounge. He's going to come set up Friday for the event. Y'all are welcome to bring your own cigars. I believe he should be selling them. If not, there is a very well-stocked humidor right down the street from the store. He's setting up for Saturday. He's just showing up Friday. Someone asked if they could uh, bring their friends, bring some bottles and cigars, and pitch a tent. I've got plenty of guys saying they're bringing generators, tents, and everything to camp out in the parking lot. Now, right. now we do have crawfish, a food truck with burgers and such, and we have a smokehouse barbecue um, truck coming. So we do have plenty of food and... It is crawfish season, so. And somebody asked, how's the parking lot? I, I think mean, it's a pretty it's good an, parking it's lot. It's semi-smooth and spacious. It's a big, pretty big parking lot, too, so you it's should have lots of room. 
it's not in the best repair if my landlord's watching. I mean, please, we can use some repairs. But. Definitely need some stripe jobs done. So also good news, uh, Maggie is up and running, and she's at the transmission shop right now having the last leak I'm aware of fixed. And so I plan on driving her over this weekend, so the 72 Lincoln Continental should be there barring something unforeseen. No more, um, no more leaks on Maggie. Ever. No more. Well, I mean, she's pretty old. Like I, you know, leak. I mean, she needs depends. At my age, everything leaks. Like it's fine, you know. I'm not, I'm not without sin here. Okay, so I give her a little leeway. I don't want to stand back here anymore. <laughs> uh, make enough uh, blinker fluid. We got her blink, blinker fluid is topped off, man. She is ready to roll. I, I, I've been rolling in that car without a radio for like, all we got a Bluetooth. And the radio was like super low, you couldn't hear it for like six months. Six months. And I finally called the guy that installed it all for me because I'm waiting on the actual radio to show up so it's not just Bluetooth. And I got, I was like, I got to get this fixed for this road trip. I can't not have a radio the whole freaking trip. And you know what it was? You know what the problem was? What? iPhones suck. <laughs> I just had somebody else pair their phone, work great. So I just unpaired, paired back. Six months I haven't had a radio. And I just needed to unpair and repair the freaking car. Sounds like you had a loose nut behind the wheel. I did. Uh, there was a loose steering wheel nut. Uh, it's so Justin Trot, yeah, store is going to be open all day from 10 to 10. Stop by any time. So your first drawing's at 9? No, 10 a.m. 10. So you Hand get there at 9, 9 and start handing out tickets. We okay, cannot legally you. sell a bottle till 10 a.m. Understand. And makes we, sense. we will be selling a bottle at 10 a.m. <laughs> so we're going to try the stuff that is going to be for sale at the event here in just a little bit. Shortly, again, for those that have just joined, we've got, what is this, four, eight, 10, 13 bottles of stuff they've brought. Um, I think some of this is, is some, some of my bottles to compare it against. But we got 13 things to try. And then after we're done with that, we're going to run some experiments, some tests to try to empty a barrel of whiskey and see how long that's going to take. Um, so what I say is, like, some of these, like the High and Wicked, just some stuff you brought. Yeah, so... So we can just crack those open and try them? Yeah, that's just, that's part of the bonus rack. That, um, that Dickel over there is part of the bonus rack. So we've got a High and Wicked Straight Rye. And I believe that's New Rift Distillate. We've got High and Wicked Straight Bourbon. Both of these very straight as an arrow. We have a George Dickel Leopold Brothers Three Chamber collaboration blend and y'all know how much i love george dickel and uh, then yes we will be giving away our old used whiskey barrels during the event too here nice let's take a pause too i i, I do have a little surprise for the event a little surprise for the event something yes. i don't know about yeah you don't know okay but i got i, I made a video for it Oh Lord! Just have to watch it. Uh, I wonder they, how close we can see. Here, you need me to get it closer. <laughs> hold, hold on. It's not in focus. I can zoom in. I'll zoom in. I'll here. zoom in right here. Look, look. There Let's. we go. And mainly, we need to hear it. Okay. <laughs> now I got to figure out how to turn it on. Come up with something fun. Come up with something creative, and we will be there. Come to the whiskey event. We're putting Bruce on a dunk and do. That's, that's oh, God. If you set up a dunk take, my fat ass will get in it. If you set up a dunk take. Oh, would you slow it down like that? That's what I'm drunk for. <laughs> we wanted to be clear. We wanted to make sure that it was. Uh -oh. Everybody we, has Everybody uh, has the charity, yeah, the, the charity yes. dunk tank. Is, is it like an extra large dunk tank? We, 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 I asked. They said it should support any weight you put on is it. Is it full of bourbon? <laughs> I mean, like, that's <laughs> all Oh, God. I'm first in line. Uh, I'm first in line. We talk about I'm donating just slapping a paddle. <laughs> uh, so, where, are the, do they have to pay to do this? Are the yes. proceeds going to some good cause at least? Alzheimer's Association. Yeah, all okay. proceeds are going to go to the Mississippi all Alzheimer's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got this I was like, I didn't sound like that. So we're going to do, they're going, everyone who donates gets to dunk you, and they get a chance at the OG Pecan Wood Barrel. No, 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 no. Okay, he's not going to be there dunking all that. We have, we have Whiskey Richard the Clown there to man the dunk tank most of the day. Okay. So the grand finale will be Bruzel in the dunk tank. We should turn it into the Infinity Barrel. The Bruzel Brian Infinity Barrel. <sighs> 
So how many chances are they going to get to dunk him? As many as they pay for. Well, yeah. we, we got a window. We got to have a window. Yeah. Details, have a window. details have not been worked out. <laughs> Bruzel is obviously not going to be in the dunk tank for three hours. We got to get you a grand I, prize. I, I do have somebody there that will be in the dunk tank. And the grand prize for your earning tickets, and we have pretty well. That's the old. That's the original no, double oak. Oh, you're, you're looking for the pecan? pecan? Yeah. Uh, we'll the original that's that's it. No, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's the original pecan. It'll be a bottle of one of these. The original, the OG Mississippi, Mississippi Toasted Pecan. So, basically, it's for charity. You throw the ball, you get a chance. They're going to do the um, Alzheimer's Association. will do a drawing at the end. The winner gets the OG Mississippi Toasted Pecan, the first version. So that that's definitely happened. <laughs> the details of how we're doing it and how much it's going to cost, uh, you know, we hadn't really worked that out with the Alzheimer's Association yet. But yes, the grand finale will definitely be Bruzel in a dunk tank. I love this. So yes, mate. Everybody who gets in line that's 21 and older will get a ticket every hour before the event. Maybe the top five tickets go to the grand finale, and the one that actually drops Bruzel wins the bottle. Okay. I mean, what if we go? That's what. So well, you, good donate, you donate throughout the day, and then at the end of the day, you randomly choose five people that have donated and thrown and and knocked your clown we'll in. Call five tickets. And then five people get to throw and see if they can knock me into the water. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Dude, this smells out. That's this smells out of this world. That's what do we get? Is that a weeder? It's very like honestly, that smells like a Weller. Really good. It smells like a Weller. What did you, who did you say distilled this? Supposedly New Rift. Like it's very sweet forward. Really smooth. So this one says distilled to Kentucky. If you look at the other one, it says New Rift on the bottle. Right up here. It doesn't that. quite taste like a Weller, but it is very fruit, fruit, fl fruit floral forward. Um, that's delicious. So what's yeah, this the, is a, what's the strength on that though? It feels like it needs more proof. It is 104 though. This is a new one that came in on our, you know, as an allocation, as a new allocation. It's getting on the B team. Um, yeah. The B team shelf. It's not making it to the full lottery, but we'll, we'll roll it out. And it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's got bad. a little, it's got a little dustiness there that I, I'm just not super in love with, but it's, I love all the sweetness. Like that's a solid bottle. Jeff, we missed Jeff super chat. Rocking my new bourbon hunter hat. Cheers guys. Appreciate it, Jeff. We will have a full merch um, tent at Spillway as well, and we're, we've held back a lot of those Bourbon Hunter hats, these new Bruzel Orcas right here, um, a, lot, a lot of shirts we've had printed that have not gone onto the site yet. And we got a new design coming just for Spillway. Yep. Buck is headed up on Friday. Looking forward to meeting everyone. Make sure you've registered Buck for the event um, on Friday at Cathead at Old Soul. So we're going to do a barrel pick at Old Soul on Friday. We're going to be there all day, uh, touring, filming. They're bottling our barrel picks. In the evening, we're going to have an event there. The first 50 people there get to help us pick a barrel of whiskey. They're going to bottle that barrel right there on site, and you'll be able to pick it up. Well, they put the mash bill on here, but God, if I could Is it weeder? It. I mean, it it's is It's super, tiny. super fruity. Uh, yeah. Corn, rye, and your favorite, malted barley. So wow. not, not they a got a lot of fruit out of that. It's ten percent. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I picked. I mean, just a hair. Uh, ten percent's not in that realm where it just like really stands out to me, though. Typically, uh, Jay Franco, how did y'all meet? So the the folks at Spillway here sent me an email. Um, really, probably uh, it's about a month ago last year, and just invited me to their event, and I was like, that sounds like fun. Uh, so I made time and went. And, and honestly, we're looking for more stores to do fun stuff with. There's just not that many stores doing really fun stuff. Like we don't, we don't really, I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing stuff with a store that has super high secondary markups. Like you can mark it up a little bit. Like that's just fair. I understand that. But like do something fun, do something unique, do something interesting. Send me an email. Let me know what that is. But most stores are just. They're just liquor stores. They're not doing really super fun events. And, you know, these folks here understand how to market. They understand how to do really crazy things. They've invited us on barrel picks. A lot of the cool stuff that we've focused on. Um, uh, Crittenton's, the video with Crittenton's, mm -hmm. Detling, 
Um, old Dominic, we did a barrel pig video with some, some distilleries we could never get access to. All set up and orchestrated by these folks. And so, you know, they're helping us uh, get to know a lot of small distilleries we wouldn't know otherwise that are doing cool stuff. They're getting us access to things that we can film that we couldn't otherwise do. Like dunk tanks. And then they're doing super fun things like putting me in a dunk tank. Um, so I'm down with it. Does red label mean good? I, we're about to find out on this high and wicked. Uh, so liquor stores, we get access to barrel picks through working with the brokers, working with the vendors, buying a lot of product from them. Okay, so about that. You can take your ticket. When you get your name call, you get in line, you get your turn. If there's nothing on the shelf that you like, we, def we typically have some door prizes that um, the distributors give us. This year, we will also be giving away our empty barrels. We have way too many barrels left over from our barrel picks. So if indeed you would rather take home a free empty barrel, they will be outside. You can put your name on it and load it up when you leave. So, yeah, we well, will that's be real soft. Yeah, it's, both of these have been very subtle. Um, what's the proof on that one? Is it the same? This one's going to be 90. Uh, 95 rye, 5 malt. I want malt, we don't know. Like, honestly, for a 95 5 rye, mm -hmm. that do, it's not too rye forward. Um, the, I think the softness probably helps it. If it were, like, super intense, it would probably be too much rye. I like it. I don't love it as much as like a very bourbon esque rye, but for a night, that might be one of my favorite ninety five fives though. It's, it's it's a very solid pour, yeah. real soft, kind of a little sweet note on the back end. But both of those are good whiskeys. Yeah. Good. they've done a good job with that for sure. You, you got it. You remember how much those are? Uh, not all. Somebody with the list out there. Yeah, it's gonna say it's on our list. Jay Franco, cheers to that friendship. Always great chemistry, and it seems genuine and natural with you guys. Salute. Appreciate it. I mean, that's all I want are fun people to hang out with. That's literally it. Like, I, how much have I charged you for all of this? Oh, I mean, it, it benefits us both. So, I mean, Nothing. A, Nothing's the answer, answer, right? The answer he gives me answer. some bottles sometimes. Like, he did, he did load me up, <laughs> but, like, I didn't ask for any of that. And apparently the locals didn't like it. I mean, he bought but, me dinner tonight. That was, I did buy you dinner tonight. Thank you. Well, I did. To, I so, did. to be fair with that being said... Our vendors, our brokers, or they're the ones that gave you those bottles. Okay. Well, even better. See, it didn't even wasn't even their bottles. Yep. Are you they knew who you were. They knew why you were there. They knew what you did. They're like, look, give them all this. If he makes a good video about it, we can post it and we can help grow that brand. We, we negotiated the deal. We were the in between. <clears throat> yeah. No. Are y'all gonna have uh, dwarf okay. prices on Saturday? If it, all though. goes well, and they That's actually bring us the stuff again this year, which usually all of our uh, brokers are really good about bringing all kind of goodies for us. Good swag. And again, the barrels, like we will give away the empty barrels if you prefer to use your ticket for that. What about uh, store picks on Saturday? Yeah. So all of our current store picks we have in store will be available. The two we have from Kit Crittenden's were shipped Hopefully today we should have those tomorrow, so they will be available during the event. Uh, Deadly will be available during the event. The K Lukes are not store picks. We will be dropping them with Jonathan Masano, though, during the event. And I'm trying to get another distiller up from Lafayette, Louisiana, to drop a small barrel with us. So who all's going to, like, distillery-wise? Did you go through everybody that's going to be there? So, um... Philip Westmoreland, who owns the distillery of KGN or Cajun's okay. Cut, he's going to be there whether his product can make it in or not. He'll still be there. We'll have Matt Crittenden, Seth Detling, uh, Jonathan Masano from K. Luke, and then we'll have the guys down from Old Dominic. I know this isn't your favorite brand, but what do you think? We, we That's all, the second best dickle I've ever We had. always try to slip a little dickle in. That's the second best dickle I've ever I did have a, what, I, well, what I was told was a Blue Note 17 Ooh. that was a dickle. That was the best dickle I've ever had. And this, like, a hint, a hint of the minerality. Just a real subtle hint it's on the nose. it that barnyard funk. That I... And then, yeah, but the, the kind of oaky funkiness dissipates. And so when Dickel's right, it turns it from Flintstone vitamins to fruity pebbles. Still Flintstones, but like a whole different thing, right? Like just very fruit forward. That's a good bottle. 
So this that's is a good this is a rye whiskey though. This is yes. a blend. Of I mean, even better. Rye like I, I like it better than it's a rye because yeah, you, yeah, you're like the rye really works. So is that that's a dickel rye? It yep. is. So maybe why the minerality is a lot less on it, a lot less. Uh, for people asking earlier, the high and wicked bourbon is going to be 99. The rye is going to be 89. And I just also want to ask about JT Millick. JT Millick makes a very solid uh, rice whiskey. Uh, Atelier Bay or Adela Bay. I'm not. I don't remember how to say his name exactly. He makes a very good rice whiskey. Okay. That's another little micro distiller I need to get you to. Damn. Uh, when we're talking He's with in JT. New Orleans. So we're talking with JT Mellick. We're going to go down and film a video there and do a barrel pick with them here fairly soon. I think toward the end, like maybe within the next month or two, we're going to get down there and, and do a barrel pick. So uh, Riley says, will I be going live on Saturday? Probably not. Maybe shortly, maybe a little bit. But honestly, it may be a TikTok live or something like that. We might try to set up a YouTube live, but we're going to be filming a video of it, and it's hard to do a video and live at the same time. So we will see, but I, I just don't expect that we're going to do a YouTube live that day. Like asking about the bonus racks. Our, um, <clears throat> it's kind of just a wheel them out, one bottle per person situation on those. They'll be wheeled out randomly. Yeah, we are not going to disclose, like, you'll have to find them. I mean, uh, it just, it's, it's, they'll be near the throne. That's all we can say. There you go. Did you say these were like 80 and $90? Yeah, 80, 89 90, and 99 So 90 and 100 Yeah. That's a bit much. That's a bit expensive for those. They, they're, they're good. They are. It's a bit much for them. Yeah. Uh, the Dickel, your, your second favorite Dickel is 120 That? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay $120 for that. <laughs> It's like, I like it. I'm not big. Hey, you get 50 bucks, sure. Sign me up. 120, y'all can have a good time with that one. What's Sam say? Oh, this, uh, you, you need a comically large Glen Cairn for the dunk take in honor of A.A. <laughs> Ron. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 will drink, I will drink an Amberana finish George Dickel if somebody actually can knock me into the dunk tank. How about that? So I believe the Crittenden pecan is going to be right around the eighty dollars <clears throat> the debtling is going to be eighty eight ninety nine get these out of the way here one more uh, that one can stay yeah it'll come back in comparison here in a little while. all right so we're going to start talking about we've got some bottles here that they are going to have available there at the event and we are going to try those and see and i've got some of the previous releases to compare we also had some Brusel picks. I think we're going to start with the Brusel picks, and we will then get into the picks that y'all can actually buy at the Spillway event. So we, we I don't know how much you know about ge um, geography down in Mississippi, but we left Jackson, drove to Hattiesburg to meet Matt Crittenden to grab some bottles. And the only way, the fastest way to Opelika, Montgomery area, is to go through Mobile. So we literally went from the center of the state down to the coastline, bounced back up if to the center of um, Montgomery, Alabama today to pick up some bottles, of which we got some of our store picks, but we also, he dropped off. So you went all the way down to his distillery? No, we went, we went to Hattiesburg. We were, okay. we were real close. But we also, he had... Two of Bruzel's picks already bottled up, so we were able to grab them. Today. So this is the last four grain pick we got for the Bruzel Club. Um, if you want to be a member of the Bruzel Club, where we release these, you can do so. Just sign up for patron. That's the easiest way. You got to join on a lower tier. Eventually, we'll open up tiers and allow you to move up and get higher access. But that's where our barrel picks go. Um, this was one that we released um, several several months ago. And this right here is the other four grain he found. As far as I know, this is the last four grain bourbon that he has available. Now he did find some four grain rye, and we're gonna go. We're gonna sample those. He's supposed to bring us some samples this weekend. So I want y'all to try both of these and let me know your thoughts on the one we're about to have versus the one we did before. Yeah, I think you had this one on film where he found it. Like it was oh, just yeah, a, it was yeah a that forgotten, was in the video. It, it was, was a forgotten, forgotten barrel. four grain, yep. And you could tell the difference in the bottles. That, I mean, yeah, it sat yeah. there a, while, a little while Matt, longer. I don't make a four grain whiskey. Matt, what's this right here? <laughs> it's four grains on the barrel. Honestly, the, one, the four grain we just did is one of my favorite barrel picks we've done. 
because this is one of those that changed my mind about rye whiskey. And I know this is a bourbon, but it's a high rye bourbon. And so this, the ryeness on this mm -hmm. is just out of this world good. The mouthfeel is fantastic. This is one of the best barrels. And we bought a lot of really nice barrels. This is one of the best barrels we've ever bought. That's good stuff. All right, mash bill on this one. 51.5% corn, 36.5 rye, 8.5 malted rye, 8.5 malted barley. Is that the same as the other one? Is this the other one? Is... Let's see. That's the other one. That one says 51.5, 36.5. Yep, same mash Same bill. mash bill. Just right. sat in the barrel. Let's see, this was bottled on 9-7-23. And this one was barreled on 2-22-24. Dustin, the, you're not wrong. If you blink, you're going to miss Crittenden's and pass right by him. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the beauty of it. Almost like TJ getting lost going to Detlin. I Well, I mean, I didn't get lost, but it said go straight, and that was straight. You had to turn. It said go, my GPS said go straight, but you didn't have to go straight. You had to turn. I would have made, I was already stopped going back when I saw y'all. So the first time when we went down there to Detlin's, we actually, we, had, we ran his wife off the road in order to even get down there. They <laughs> just better head on. Yeah, pretty much. That's why we don't let Bobby drive too much. Lord. <laughs> so on these four grains, like the more I drink, the more I like the new one, the the fresh barrel. But it, you can taste the chocolate of the malt a little more. Like the malt impact is a little stronger on this one, maybe because it stayed in the barrel another year. But the more I drink it, the more that malt impact is actually really nice. Like, it's not super strong, overwhelming. But these are very, very similar, but quite a bit different as well. Colin, I think Rio Batch 3 is what they're on now. And if it is, I, mean, I tried it the other day. It's, it's you like the very, newer better? very yeah. high on You like that little, little bit of more maltiness on it? Yeah, like Which one? The first one? I like the older one. Like, the little more age on that. Well, yeah. the older one's this one. Isn't it? Oh, that's so. six year in his hand. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this is one we peeled all the wax off of, so I thought this was the one yeah, that, that was, was the older one. That was the younger one. Well, that, that, one is, the, just that is by older one, I mean, that is the older barrel pick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the newer barrel pick. Yes, and it had yeah. more age in the barrel. Yeah, so it it's an older one. I mean, you can even sure. tell. It's, it is a little darker. I don't know if you can tell the camera with the green lights behind us. But. The more I drink it, the more I like it. But I... I just love this one so much. I, I think y'all are gonna really, if you had this four grain and you and you love this four grain, you're gonna love this one as well. But it's super interesting, the subtle differences between them. So Colin, it should say on the label which batch it is down there. I think the bottom middle, you have a- Somebody with better eyes. When was this Penelope distilled? Around here? Can you see when that was I, distilled? I gotta put, I gotta I'm wondering if these were distilled at the same time. Yeah, it, people don't realize how dark it is looking yeah, back this way, right? On Even worse now that the lights are green. Yeah, Colin, uh, it was what? Bottom right Barreled inside on September 7th, 2017. It was bottled on September 7th, 2023. So September 7th, 2017. What about that one? When was it distilled? When was it barreled, I guess? September 7th, 2017. So same day. Yeah. And then same. that one sat in there for... How much longer? This one was bought on February was September. So give it three, another five months older. Okay, so five, five months, months older yeah. than this one, and it like it it it's definitely different. Matthew with the super chat, appreciate the support there, Matthew. Which is fun. I mean, to be able to get the exact same um, juice going in just takes the difference in the age. Is yeah, it the malt fun. the malt gets a little bit stronger, but it's not overwhelming. It's not like a high malt where I get like the twenty plus mm -hmm. percent malt where I'm not a huge fan. It's just the malt impact is a little stronger on that one, the newer one to me, which is really interesting. It's a little more, honestly, it's a little more complex and a little more well-rounded, but I do love the kind of light rye flavors of the original ones. So it's, it's tough. Honestly, I need to blind those at some point to make sure I'm not biased toward the old. Uh, for sure. Hunter, there will be a lot of samples at the event. All the samples. A lot of good food and a lot of samples. Are you creating an infinity blend over there of all the stuff we've tried? Is that what you're doing? Shh. 
<laughs> We're going to have to try that at the end, aren't we? It's going to have his spit in all of it. A little okay. bad boy's never hurt anybody. The <laughs> next barrel pick we're going to try here is the new Crittenden's Double Oak, which I, I'm excited about because the reason I'm excited is the last Double Oak I got, it was not my pick. Hey, hey look, I got a fan club going there. What you got? Hey, Jill. Jill? Yeah, she, she's... Uh, she likes everybody, man. She's nice to everybody. Come on, man. You know, it's not it's just you. Me. She's nice to everybody. It's all about me. This was Spillway's double oaked pick, and this was double oaked for like six ish months. This was put in that oak at exactly the same time, exactly the same day, but then he left it in there another year and a half. So this has been double oaked for two full years. And I am very, very excited to try this. And it's dark and sultry. It Look is at so that. dark. Like, the color on that is absurd. Here, y'all can try that one. I'm going to try it versus the normal double oaked here. I, I say normal by other double oaked. I mean, I think Jill likes me. Mate. You think she was tapping me on the leg? What I say? She might have been leg What'd tapping I me. I don't know. What's, what's, she was talking to Josh Gamble, I think. I, I think she was talking to Joshua Gamble Hey, Joe, so if you drive yep, down, that's what she was if you doing. go to our Facebook page, you can see every item and every hour that we're going to be dropping, so you have good chances of getting the old fits. I don't remember if we had any Russell's in there. Russell's 13? Nope. No. No, I think he drank it all. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. The old Crittenden's Double Oak is good. I like it. It's not out of oh, this world different gosh. from his normal stuff. Like six months in the oak was not enough. So I'm interested to see what another year and a half is going to do to it. Oh, that smells different for sure. Much oakier. Where's, is that the original one? That is the OG right there. Oh, my God. That's a whole different experience than the original. A lot of oak, a lot of cinnamon. Dude, that just gets better and better. Like every sip of that is better than the last sip. Will, you're a double oak fan. Did you get some of it? What are you drinking? Uh, you're know. still working on something. He doesn't yeah. even know. Did you try that? Try that double oak. This one? Yeah. Will is my double oak tester here. So I, this one is hands down better than the original. Now, you got to like oak. If you don't like the oak, it's going to be too much oak for you. But this has, man, that's, that's beautiful. So I like what Jeff's talking about there on the Super Chat. I have, it's a 27-year-old Obtanium Light Whiskey cash strength, like yeah. 180 proof. That's good. Okay. And it's fantastic. He's talking about 23-year-old. That, that just sounds like it'd be delicious. Okay, that's Honestly, I think I like that Crittenden's better. The, the two-year Crittenden's better than that Peerless, though. That's but as good as I'd a, have to blind it to be for sure. That is as good as a double oak gets. I am just not a fan <laughs> of all of that oak. You're not a double oak I, fan, I, though. I am yeah. not. I yeah. Am not. You don't like any, so we had the 13th Colony double oak earlier. He didn't like that. And that's I mean, the one the, everybody's the looking for. double oak. Is you don't like the wood for not, double oak. Not even a fan. Okay. I mean, like, uh, so, Bud, they just don't offer anything other than, I think, the benchmark Number eight, the regular everyday benchmark. That's the only one we get offered in Mississippi. Otherwise, we would take the full lineup. It's just the stiller issues. Uh, Casey says, what will the double O go for? So that double O right there is for the Bruzel Club. So sign up for Patreon if you want access to that. I think there's a chance. I cannot guarantee it. There's a chance it will be in the drop at the end of this month. We are trying to wait on at least five barrels. Right now, we have three barrels and we're waiting on Crittenden's to send some barrels. Um, I'm hoping those are there. How much it'll go for, I do not know. A normal Crittenden's, Crittenden's is cheap stuff. So no, that's one of the things I love about it. It's really good and it's affordable. A normal Crittenden's bottle is like 50-ish bucks. Um, by the time he gets it into Texas and all that, it might be a little more, it might be 60. I, I don't know, I haven't seen the actual wholesale cost on it, but Crittenden's is normally a pretty affordable bottle of whiskey. That's one of the things I love so much about it because a lot of these ways, like the high and wicked stuff, that was really good. Like, I mean, it's not like I don't want to oversell it, but that was a good bottle. It's like 80, 90 bucks, though. It's like, you know, that definitely puts a bit of a damper on it. Whereas, like, Crittenden's for 50 bucks for his bonded, man, you could just have a good time and not worry about it. To try. And the next bottle is the new blended batch 
of Mississippi Toast of Pecan from Crittenden's. And I've got, as a comparison, OG Batch 1 right here. And Jay James, yes, I am the um, resident rye fan. You're the rye the guy. I, okay. do, I do like a rye whiskey. And is the toasted pecan for spillway or for the brusel? No, these are, these are spillway. We are now done with the brusel picks that I have here. These are spillway. You have your own I, pecan. I think coming. you have some pecan. You get eight barrels. I, I am supposed to. Uh, yeah. Yes. So the, this is your bottle. These are your, like, these are his bottles. He brought one that he will have for sale at the store. I am supposed to have a barrel's worth of this toasted pecan coming to the Brusel Club the, for sure. The pecan 2.0 is a batch release, so he married several barrels together yep. to make it. So it should be exactly we, the yeah, same Yeah, we thing. should be getting yep. exactly the same whiskey on this one. How close are we? I mean, like... I think, so, the, I, think the, um, I think the pecan impact is stronger on the new one. Like, I so, think it is a stronger, like, almost like a tobacco flavor to it. Um... In this context where we have tried a lot of whiskeys and your palate starts to desensitize a little bit, I would prefer the new release because I feel like the flavors are a little stronger. I might change my mind if it's the first pour of the day and everything's more subtle. All right, so the history behind this. This is a an exclusive Mississippi Sippers Spillway Wine and Spirits release. Basically, you know, Matt Crittenden, one man distiller, we help him make bot barrel finishes. This has toasted pecan staves from Mississippi that are sourced out of Raymond, Mississippi. Is this his normal, like normal bonded stuff? Yes. Yeah, because okay. normal bonded. This is it almost room. feels like it has and a little higher malt impact to it. We, so we hand and I, it could just be the pecan. and kiln dry all yeah. the pecan that goes in the pecan staves. Um, some might get a little bit more char than others. Some might get a lot of char. Some right. might just be toast. But yeah, we built this one. We had one barrel. It was wildly popular, so we've now gone to a batch, and we're, you know, it's not a exact science. We're we're basically have to put it together, blend them, and come up with a common flavor and try to match what we made previously. What are you doing? They wanted to zoom in. What, the heck, how about you just you bring were, it back here where it's in pouring. focus, and I was, I will zoom in. I was trying to help like you just out while right you were there, there drinking. Right there. Before. Look Let's do that. Turn it around so this people can see it right, tech here. right here. Highfalutin. Right there. That is the label. It's a fancy label. It's a little, maybe a little too fancy for the camera. <clears> but <throat> um, there. there we go. Now will y'all the pecan can be available or is it going to be on the rack? So 200 of them will go into the racks. 40 bottles every hour. For five hours. So five drawings. There's 40 bottles available at each drawing. It's the best way we can out. I mean, this, this is one of the most sought after things on our rack. I mean, it's, I mean, we get calls about it all of the time. So we are trying to distribute it the best that we can so everybody gets a fair shot. I was just asked that you wear his cape for the throne. I wear his cape? Yes, his Christmas cape. Is a Christmas cape for the throne? Or for your, the, your Christmas the dunk cape? tank? No, 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 no. You, you might drown in that one. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm like taking. I'm pushing. I keep. I've got so many bottles in front of me, and there's like a countertop over here. I feel like I'm pushing y'all off the screen here. Bob says cherry wood, Crittenton's is phenomenal. I agree, Bob. That's a really, really good bottle. Uh, we're going to finish the last Crittenton's we have here tonight, and then we've got stuff from two more distilleries we want to try. And this one is the new Stogie Batch Mississippi Sippers Crittenton's Cut Above. Cigar blend right here. Tell me about this one a little bit. So that is something me, Bobby, and Dan have been wanting to do with Crittenden's for a while. Uh, most of the sippers were all big cigar enthusiasts. We really like cigar batch whiskeys. We don't like some of the real stronger, sweeter ones that you get in the market. So we wanted to come to market with a very cigar enthusiast whiskey. It's not really sweet, not really heavy on any certain note, blends very well, and just has a very good long-lasting finish. And they did that with a blend of bourbon whiskeys in cognac, armagnac, port barrels, and añejo tequila barrels. So I, I did have a little sample of this before we streamed, um, and it like it was just kind of almost like tangerines, like it was just like really kind of fruit all the way through the middle. Um, I really like this. This is a this might be one of the better 
I mean, it's hard to say with with um, Crittenden's. I was about to say one of the better finished Crittenden's, but like the toasted pecan, it's it's one of the better non just like double oaked, I, and I consider that pecan double oaked um, Crittenden's that I've had. All right, I get all the tangerine now. Tangerines, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tangerine it's just all comes, through the middle, right? It, it's all right there. You get that yeah. really long vanilla tobacco finish on it. Um, yeah, I might be buying a case of that myself. Yeah, I've <laughs> got to have some of that. Ryan says, does Crittenden ship to Pennsylvania? Uh, no, but I think we will, and we should have a lot of Crittenden's. He's getting into Texas so he can ship straight from his website. I think he's talking to the retailer we use. So I think he will be able to ship to every state we can ship to here pretty soon. And if Seth or Grant are in the chat still, they can let you know what those states are not. And we, like there's, there's a bunch of states. He'll let you know what states we don't ship to. Yeah, we're working on it. We're trying to get as much Crittenden's to you guys as we can get out. So well, I mean, that's P the biggest problem he has is just getting it to people. Yeah. So, PJ, unfortunately, being in Mississippi, we can't out ship way. in or out of Mississippi. Only way to get our stuff is to come to the store, hang out with us for a little bit. It's worth the layover. <laughs> <laughs> the layover in Jackson. All right, so this is the pick. If you watched the video a week ago last Friday where we were at Detlings down in South Alabama, this is your pick. So what I'm going to do, though, what I'm going to do. All right, that Stogie batch is amazing. I, oh, the Stogie I batch is really good. That's really Yeah, it's really right, good. I'm going to need another glass. glass I'm going to give you all a third glass because yeah, glass. what water. you're going to try yeah, is you're also going to try my two Detling picks. All right. So we are going to try... Your deadling pick right here. I'm saving my stogie batch. Yeah, I am too. I'm gonna grab you another good. glass. You got a whole bottle there. Yeah, he gave me one. All right, here. Did you All get right, a third? I'm trying three deadlings. Yeah, I got three. Okay. This is three deadlings right here. We're gonna try three deadlings. You gonna just pour a small sample of that because I need to take a little bit for some other folks to try. So don't over pour my samples here because I'm about out. That's how you know it's good juice. You done drunk most of it. So as in your samples, as in these are yeah. That, the the first that the first one you're getting is the high rye, and the second one you're getting is the less rye, a little more closely related to what you picked, but not as malty. So the high rye was the second one, I believe, right? Uh yeah. So he he. Seth hit me up and he's like, "Hey man, uh, we might have a little problem. Um, I think your barrel was 519, not 514." And I was like, "What? What do you mean? Because it says like we we signed up for 514." And he's like, "Yeah, I almost sold the 519 barrel today, but I think it's your barrel. I think somebody just wrote down the wrong number. <laughs> so I think his son just wrote the wrong number on the bottle. And so instead of 519, he wrote 514. So this the the high rye one almost got sold out from under us. That's uh, that's five something. But he he caught it before he did it. So this first one is yours. That's Detlin. That's that is like, y'all watch the video, right? <laughs> that is all the malt. That is all that is just chocolate. So this one is good. This one is way too much malt for my taste. Uh, Non-existent. We, we, we're just starting to find yours. Strong over here. I started with yours. Yeah. It's just it's just dark chocolate. Yeah. If you oh, like yeah. dark chocolate on your whiskey, you're gonna so, love it. It's not me. So the first one we picked was just a hundred percent dark cocoa. Right, yeah, yeah, that's yours. You, yeah. No, I'm. Yeah, that's white. Than that. So to our very oh, you're first, about your first barrel, our white yeah. wax one. Yeah. You couldn't tell me there was okay. any other flavor but dark chocolate. So that one's light compared to it, but it's just too, it's too over the top for me. Like the malt just dominates that one. And I know it's only 3%. I only know that now. I did not know that before, but it is just super malt forward. This one, this one is my jam right here. This is the, the rye forward, the forward, I believe. Okay. I believe I got those numbers right. Now y'all may have poured y'all's in a different, different order. There's, the malt's still there. You still get some of the cho chocolate impact. You get more spice at the end. I, I, but I you're get, definitely getting a little more rye on that I one. I get a lot and of I, mint. Mm -hmm. When I haven't had 15 pours, I get a lot of rye on that one. But today, it's a little less. No, I get it. I mean, there's a spearmint there yeah. that wasn't with but the But the, the malt is a lot less on that. The impact's a lot lower. So that's what we went for off-profile stuff. And then the last one is a little closer to his profile but the malt impact was a lot less than y'all's barrel. Yeah, this is like mint chocolate chips right here. Pretty good. 
Jack that one's so good. Like now that I've drank several, the last one is so freaking good because you get like the malt is a lot less, but it's still there. Agree. Sorry, we, 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 I was gonna say Justin from Spillway is so cool. We oh, Justin from Spillway is a cool guy. <laughs> Only on Mondays. Today's Monday. I will. You're not cool tomorrow. <laughs> A I barrel want, of whiskey. I want to know how come we didn't get one of these um, barrels of Dudley. You, you one gonna, of the really good ones? Yeah. How are you? You got out? first pick. It was your pick. You got first pick. Okay. Oh, so these guys. You got uh, first pick, man. I took what was. I took the leftovers, but luckily y'all didn't take the best something? barrels. You're just better at it than my team. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I went with something that was close yeah. to his everyday shelf bottle, so I could introduce a broader market to it. Yeah, I, I got the best barrels. I'm just gonna like his barrels good. I got the best barrels, for sure, not even close. I got the best barrels. Um, Bourbon Hunter, I definitely would like a bag of coffee at the event. A bag of coffee? He just brings some coffee. Yeah, he roasts his own coffee as a hobby. That Where in cool. L.A. is Detling sold? Louisiana? I don't know. It should be around. I think he's in uh, Louisiana. Check some right? of the Total Wines in Baton Rouge, Mandible area. I've seen them a few times in there. Tell me about these, and then open them. So Got some K Luke's. Get this, grab that debt link and slide it down. Make sure on I have there. the right number here. This is K Luke Batch 8, 118.8 proof. K Luke comes from Jonathan Masano, who owned, used to own Masano's Fine Wine and Spirits. I believe Ocean Springs is where he was at. Um, he picked a ton of barrels with his uh, store. He ended up deciding he was just going to start picking barrels and blending them, make some of the best whiskey he could. So we have the K Luke Batch 8 and the K Luke Batch 2 Toasted. Okay, so this is the Toasted. I think I've got a to Is that you have toasted? toasted? The orange label is a Toasted? One. Yes. Okay. I want to rinse these real quick. Go for it. So this was the Toasted. The orange label is the Toasted. Yes. Okay. So are you trying to toast it first or the batch first? Mm hmm. Toasted. pretty good that's like what he does mm. he's got a very he gets, solid palate. he yeah. gets the like velvety mouth feel like that dude just nails the mouth every bottle i've had from him he just gets all the intangibles really well you get a lot of good orange vanilla yep. very creamy rich long finish really nice i i think i like just the normal stuff better than the toasted But I do like the toasted. Like, I like the toasted, but the normal stuff, you, yeah, it's... The it's, toasted gets right up there with the, um, the toast du with a the double sweet. barrel to me. It gets yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that There's a little too much char, going on. That yeah. overly char flavor. This is way more subtle. I mean, I... I definitely like the normal whiskey. So Scott, right now better. we are tasting K. Luke Batch 8 cask strength and K. Luke Batch 2. The Batch 2 is also cask strength. <clears throat> Uh, 118.2 on the toasted, 118.8 on the regular. All right, so those are the bottles that will be available at Spillway this weekend. Again, for those that are just joining, Friday we are doing a distillery takeover of Cathead Distillery in Jackson, Mississippi, the makers of Old Soul. Um, there are tickets available right now. It's like 20 bucks online, $25 if you show up uh, day of and for that money, you get a you get a Glen Cairn from them. You get a tasting experience. You get a full tour of their facility, and the first 50 people that show up will be able to help us pick a barrel of Old Soul that they are then going to bottle right there that evening, and you'll be able to buy and take home with you. And then it'll just be a party. We'll just be hanging out. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have a good time. But then Saturday, we're going to be over in Brandon, Mississippi, at Spillway to um, have their annual lottery. Uh, so make sure if you're anywhere in the area, if you want to make the drive, be sure to do so. At Spillway, we are going to do an infinity barrel. So bring five bucks, bring a bottle of bourbon, nothing finished, and you can pour it in the first, like until it's full. Once it's full, that's the end of it. We're going to pour it in a barrel. And then at the end of the evening, we're going to pump it all out, which we're going to do a test of here in a minute to see if that's even, because. I, honestly, I'm a little nervous. So, we, so, so walk through the process. Well, like, we did. We you did show math. up with it. You show up with the bottle. Yes. And you're going to dump the bottle in. And then you're going to get the bottle for five stickers. bucks. You get a sticker 
that now you have to bring your empty bottle back. Yes, you bring it back at the at end, of the, the end of the day. But once it's full, or we call it. So realistically, most people who are going to be there probably going to be there by lunch. So we'll probably call it at noon, and then you come back over at, with your sticker, stickered bottle, and then we will pump out a bottle of whatever that blend was. Now, the problem is, is we did math. I, did ma I didn't do math before I agreed to do it. I did math after I agreed to do this. And if it's 240 bottles in a barrel, which is not unrealistic, a full barrel, if it's 240, if it takes us a minute to bottle one, that's four hours. Good luck with that. <laughs> so uh, that's why we are about to do a test. We have devised a way to cut that time so into like less than an hour, but we got to make sure all the stuff I bought to make that work actually works. And we're going to try that here in just a minute after we drink some wild turkey. So in full disclosure, Spillway Wine and Spirits has nothing to do with parking lot whiskey. Nothing to do with parking. I have nothing to do with parking lot whiskey. Grant, Seth, unaffiliated. I don't know who those people are. They're doing parking lot whiskey. Justin says, are we bringing plenty of merch Saturday? No, I'm bringing one hat. One, one <laughs> He's bringing just enough to disappoint you all. <laughs> I'm bringing 120 hats. He's bringing a lot. I mean, it's not, 200 blends. They could sell out, but he's bringing a lot. Two, 100 orcas of the bourbon hunter and the 100 orcas of the bruise little gun. Ooh, and that pretty good. 50 coasters. And a surprise shirt. Oh, let me also point out, if you're going to the Bruzel event at Cathead Friday night, the west and downtown is literally across the street. Like, yep. No That's better, where we're, we're staying No better place for any of for you sure. to stay if you're coming and doing the whole thing. Like, it's a 15, 20-minute drive to my store from there. Um, downtown has a nightlife. I mean, there's nothing else going on during the day downtown on, Friday, on Saturday. Yeah. But Friday night, if there are a couple clubs that are open every Friday night that are... Worst case, night. there's a lot of I'll Waffle there. Houses. Yes. And, Paul, War Eagle 1, uh, you can actually buy a bottle at Spillway when they open. What time will you open on Saturday? So at 10, you could go in and buy a bottle. It just needs to be a bourbon or Tennessee whiskey, not finished. I mean, if it's a double oak, okay, but like not finished. No wicked uh, So you could buy that and then just go dump it and get a sticker. Like it's fine until the barrel fills up. And, so and you can just wait till Saturday and do that as and well. And just like Will wants to sell all of his merchandise, I want to sell all of my liquor. So, I mean, if I run out, we'll just close down. <laughs> I don't think That's you're gonna sell out everything. Dream right I know. There. To like, close early, like, like my staff right now is is recording this, and they're gonna be playing it back just like I played your. Oh, Terry's <laughs> not gonna let you live. Hey, Josh, we ain't got nothing but four bottles of. Can we go home now? <laughs> Bill's He's gonna have a whole bunch of these there too. The yeah. Bruzel Barrel Head. Uh, oh, because I saw it again. Good times. So good times just became available in Mississippi. I just, we just don't unfortunately have it yet. We drank too much. I have nine samples of different finishes from Good Times over there right now that I, I'm bringing. So if you're gonna hang out with us, maybe Friday night. I, I've got to take them to Mississippi for the team because Grant and Seth and Shred are in. Well, We've got to like try them to see if we want barrels of them. But I have all their finishes. Sounds like I'm hanging out Neapolitan, with all that stuff. Like, we've got them all. <clears throat> We're not drinking them tonight, though. Claire, I'm going to need a DD Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> and probably Saturday. Well, we might, and we, we're, we're just talking about what finishes do we want for, for the Bruzel Club, right? And I don't, I don't know yet. I've tried a couple of them. I was like, these are weird. They're like, they are out of this freaking world the on the good strange. Times. Yeah, they're, they're strange. They're, 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 they're doing good. some really strange but, stuff. But, I mean, it's fun. It's a, it's a hell of fun. Like, if, if they're not out there trying these things and doing the experimental things, you don't know until you know. I mean, I'm not even sure how some of this stuff exists. <laughs>